Good morning. Welcome to Bayside. So happy that you're joining us online. And if you are one of the few people here, so happy to have you. Would you stand with us this morning? We're going to praise God together. I know that there's a lot of you online. Um, I just want to take a moment, and uh, I thought we could learn a new song, if that's all right with you. I think it's about that time. Um, there's something incredible about this song, and it just talks about how God can just turn anything into a positive. Um, so it goes a little something like this. So the, actually, the chorus, it's probably about as simple as it gets. It goes something like this. Oh, there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you pretty simple right just a straightforward declaration pretty cool um there's only like one other weird part and i'll teach you that right now and those are the bridges the bridges sound something like this 
you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you'll go to a little something like that and then there's a bridge that's very very similar do you think we can do it i think we can do it all right let's give it a shot
That's good, isn't it? It is just so good for our spirit, for our soul to worship God and just tell him who he is. He already knows it, but it's good for us to proclaim it. Amen. We're going into a time of sharing communion with one another. And so at home, will you please uh, find an element, find some bread, some juice, or any uh, thing that you could use. It's symbolic. It's not, um, it, it doesn't matter if you're using a little cup or, or, or whatever it is, just grab something, okay, and, and join. Let's all join together. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's remember what we just read. This isn't just ceremony. This isn't just a, a, a symbolic gesture to change our mood. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. 
what is it about remembering and proclaiming the Lord's death that makes us remember Jesus? And in fact, not just remember him, but remember who we are to him. Remember what is really going on in life. We might look at the circumstances around us, the conditions that we feel we're in. But Jesus says, look at me. Remember me. There is so much more going on. There's so much more that is way more powerful than what you might be feeling controlled over. Mm. This is what we remember when we proclaim the Lord's death. We are reminded that our past is washed clean. That we are living on the other side of redemption. Our past is washed clean. When we look back, anything we look back is wrapped up in the redemptive work that Jesus did. We are reminded that our present is about Jesus. Our past is washed clean and our present is about Jesus. He gives us his very life. He is a risen Lord living in us and for us. And we're reminded that our future is filled with hope. Our future is filled with hope. Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, when he was sharing his last meal with his disciples, he said, I'm not going to drink this, uh, of this vine, drink this wine again until I drink it anew with you. Ooh, we're reminded of that to, together, that we look forward to a day when we get to share a meal, share a banquet with Jesus face to face. That's what we look forward to. Our past is washed clean. Our present is all about Jesus, his love, his power. And our future is filled with hope. Yes. What lies ahead of what God has already planned. Yes. We read in Exodus 25 about a bread of the presence of God. When Jesus said that he gives us his life, this bread is my body. He gives us his bread that was brought before the altar and enables us to come before Almighty God. Jesus also said, this is my blood poured out for you. He is also our drink offering. He's our perfect and forever sacrifice. And he's also the drink offering that follows the sacrifice, that seals it, that finishes the deal. When we proclaim the Lord's death, we proclaim this, that his work is all that we need, not ours. Yes. And these offerings in the Old Testament, we read in Exodus 29, we read about uh, offerings being presented exactly as prescribed, perfect, so that, in verse 29, 40 through 42, so that we could come into his presence. So that we could come into his presence. Jesus has made it so that we could come into Almighty God's presence. We come to him. He is here. He is in your home right now. There is nothing between you and him. Get wrapped up in his presence. Proclaim the Lord's death. Whew, proclaim his goodness. Amen. Let's take our elements. Whatever element you might have at home. body of Christ given for you. The blood of the new covenant, everlasting covenant shed for you. Lord God, you're so good. Oh, good. You've done it all. No matter what's going on around us, we proclaim you. You are good. We're tired, but you are strong. Yes. We're weak, which means you're about to glorify yourself in us. We don't have the answers, but you have the plan. So we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. We surrender to you. I pray as we receive this communion, Lord God, that we receive healing, strengthening, and encouraging. Holy Spirit, invade our minds, invade our hearts right now. For this we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen.
Father, we're not enough. And we can admit that. God, when you think about it, we've never been good enough. You had to take your only son to bless us. And God, you still continuously give and give and give because that's what a great father does. You just constantly give to us. You give us life. You give us love. Heavenly Father, we've got nothing to complain about at all. Absolutely nothing. about eternal life, God. We can't. It's these distractions, God, that just, they keep us unfocused. God, you're going to right the ship today. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get it right today. If we haven't, we're going to write it. We're going to write this ship right now. We're going to turn it around right now, God, in your heavenly, in your heavenly name, we're going to turn we're going to write this ship now. God, we've got nothing to complain about. The amount you give to us every day, the ability to breathe, the ability to see. If we can do those things, God, there's still hope. That's what a good father does, God. That's how good you are. And Heavenly Father, as we transition into service, I pray that you keep that mindset with us. That how grateful we are, how grateful that we need to be every day. God, may it be infectious. God, may that positivity be infectious around our neighbors. May it be infectious around our enemies. Infectious to you. I say all this in your precious name, the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Yes, Amen. Let's just keep, let's just stay here in this posture and this attitude of worship as we move along and into our message. Let's continue to, to worship God with our attention. I just want to give you a couple uh, announcements. Really, as we're worshiping together and we're talking about how good God is and how much we can trust him, doesn't it just make you want to come together, be together? In fact, so many people have been talking, as whether it's to me or anybody else, we just want connection. You want that connection. There's a lot of ways we can maintain that and even start that uh, in a distant uh, way with social distancing. But what I'm here to announce is that we're coming back together on the 13th. On Yeah, uh, I think I'm hearing a, a lot of applause uh, from every household that's listening right now. We're coming back together. We're going to have an outdoor worship in front of our building on the 13th. So that is, when is that? That is next Sunday. Next Sunday, we are all coming together. We are still going to have a, a quality online service. We're not going to diminish that at all. In fact, we're going to keep on improving that. But we're going to come together. There's going to be plenty of space by... Um, sectioning off the front parking spots and if you bring your own chair and easy up we'll we'll provide some as well but bring your own easy up and chair and come and, and get comfortable and we're going to uh have amplified sound and outdoor worship and really we hope also to bless our neighbors and, and invite our neighbors to come out as well but next week at 9 a.m next week 9 a.m out in front of our church it's time to come back together and you know what? It's not just time to come back together as an event or as a way to uh, get refreshed a little bit. It's time to come back together for mutual encouragement. Let's build each other up. Let's celebrate to get encouraged and then to go out and shine. Now, before we do that, though, before we do that, on the 11th, the Friday before, this Friday coming up, we are having an all-church town hall meeting at 6 p.m. And we're, we have a Zoom link for you if, if you still want to... Uh, catch it from home, but I'm asking everybody 
who can to make it out on the 11th so that we can rally together. The purpose for this town hall meeting is to check in with each other. You need to know as a church the condition of our church, what's going on, what has been happening, and also what God is telling us about moving forward with one another. I believe with all my heart and I'm convinced that this is going to be a powerful time and I want you to be a part of it. Whether it's just a few of us that join or all of us, God is going to spark something in our church. He intends to this Friday and moving forward. We're not waiting around for anything anymore. It's time to move forward. We're a church, church of Jesus Christ, and we got a mission and a purpose. Let's come together for that. So the 11th, 6 p.m. here, and then on the 13th, 9 a.m., we will still broadcast a recording at 1045. On, uh, and so our rockers will have a service. Our 55-plus community will be able to come in at 1045 and um, enjoy that space very safe. Nobody else will come in but 55 plus, okay? All right, just a couple more things to run through. Uh, uh, we have a thing called the Parent Pit Stop. Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, come and get connected and get refreshed. For at least an hour, you'll have a, a teacher or two or a few pouring into you, giving you some tips and tricks on how to work with your kids. But more importantly, you'll have some time to just hang out with another adult and just have your own parent recess. Meanwhile, your kids will have a blast. We have games and a lot of activities just to get them exercising, and then we'll send them home with you. On the 19th, coming up, we have... Our Bayside and Galt yard sale, it's our annual yard sale. Normally we have this back in May, but um, due to the conditions we were in, we postponed and we're ready to hit the ground running. And, and uh, this, the cause is both continued scholarships for our, our kids, but also uh, we're taking a portion of this and it'll be part of community outreach for the needs that are immediate right now. And so we're inviting our whole community, our town and our region to come out on the 19th. If you have items decent items, not things that you're about to throw away, items that you could donate to sell, please get in contact with Christina uh, Wagner. And if you would like to volunteer to uh, help set this up and, 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 and serve during that morning, you could also contact Christina Wagner. That's Christina Wagner at BaysideAndGalt.com. All right. Uh, all... That's enough, <laughs> that's enough announcements for now. There's other stuff going on. There's groups and there's ways to connect. Please, if you have any questions, connect with us at info at baysideandgalt.com. So right now, without further ado, I want to bring up a very special guest speaker. It's not really a guest speaker. It's one of our main guys here, Pastor Jason Schmidt. Come on up here. We get to hear from him this morning. All right. Well, good morning. See, we have a few little church mice in here this morning, those that are on our leadership team and our staff and just those that, that help uh, make this place run uh, to make a, uh, it, it possible on a Sunday morning. And so we want to welcome you this morning online. We want to welcome you in the house this morning. Um, and my name is Jason. I am one of the pastors here at Bayside Church in Galt. Um, and I welcome you uh, just here this morning and I'm excited to dive into God's Word, to continue this series and see what God has for us this morning. I believe that you're here for a reason. I believe that you're sitting here this morning. I believe that you are clicking on our Facebook page, whether someone told you about it, someone duked you into it, you got drug here, you are here this morning because God wants to say something to you this morning. And I truly, truly believe that. Um, can you believe that it's almost autumn, or as we like to call, fall? Um, you're going to, and probably have already been seeing, pumpkin spice, absolute everything. Uh, there is pumpkin, yes, there, someone has a pumpkin spice latte in this place today. Um, and so fall brings pumpkin spice. I don't know how we ever correlated that. There are two. Even a sound and tech person has one this morning. Um, so I know all of you sitting at home already went somewhere and got something pumpkin. Um, or you're probably just baking from scratch because you had the time this morning. But fall is here. Pumpkin spice, sweater weather, the Ugg boots are coming out. Uh, the, rain, the hunter rain boots are coming out. You're gearing up for a change. You're gearing up uh, for a change in the weather. Amen. Uh, we are going to be leaving this heat behind. Today is going to be a day for the books. Yes. Uh, 
It is going to be hot today, and uh, so if you are in a place, uh, maybe on the beach, uh, God bless you today. But it is going to be hot. Stay in and stay cool today. Um, this summer has been one for the books. Last time I spoke was back in May, and it was just literally speaking to a camera, and so it was fun to be able to speak with the worship team, kind of just warming up this morning and getting our hearts right. Um, the Rona uh, held on uh, for a few more months this summer uh, than expected. We were hoping this would be a few week thing. Um, news media has still been super confusing. Um, online, our friends, our family, discussions that we've had have been um, sometimes very difficult. Uh, probably friendships have even ended through this. This is a very strange and different time right now. Restaurants closed again. Um, just when we thought my wife and I had gone to Makuni's and it was like, oh, but it was weird at the same time because there were so many booths closed and different things, but we were back in a restaurant and here we are again. You know, these poor people are trying so hard, but yet the flies when you're eating, it's just very weird. Um, our indoor church service is closed again, um, which is just heartbreaking to us. Um, and now distance learning, lucky for you parents, lucky, lucky you. Um, our amazing teachers are doing everything that they can uh, to make our online learning um, experiences. I know these Galt teachers and surrounding have just been putting in so much time. So we thank you, teachers. We thank you this morning. Even though there's probably negativity on social media, forget about it. You're doing an amazing job, and you're doing with what you have an amazing job for our kids. Um, so this has been an interesting, interesting time in our lives. And I want us to come through this today, even if we get a different perspective, of that we're able to see Jesus in and through this time. We're able to see Jesus continue to work in our lives, even in a confusing and sometimes even darkened time. So this morning, we're going to continue in our, ser our series of Philippians. We're going to be focusing in on chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Paul is the author of this book, as many of you probably know, and he's writing to the church of Philippi as he's imprisoned. Um, we often forget about this amazing man, and we often forget about where he came from. And I think sometimes that's good to remember because we may see people in our church or people that we know that, that achieve something amazing, and you, you don't realize what they came from to get to that place that they're at. This apostle Paul, someone that we hold up very highly in the Christian faith, was Saul of Tarsus. Saul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was educated. He was effective. He was a persecutor of Christians. Some of you may not have known that. But God had other plans for Paul that day. Paul, Saul became Paul when God got a hold of his heart and his life. I want to read to you. Um, we're going to read, if you have your Bibles, if you have a device, um, anything. I know we don't carry these around all the time anymore. But if you have something at home or here, if you would turn to Philippians chapter 3. And I want to read together verses 1 through 11. But I want to pray before we do that. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this morning. May my words be your words this morning. What you want to say to your children, your sons and your daughters, who you love so much, God, this morning. Teach us from your word, from the book of Philippians, and touch us today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So chapter 3, we're going to start with verse 1. And this is Paul speaking to the church of Philippi and even us today. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord because there's an exclamation mark. So you gotta, you gotta say it like that. It is no trouble for me to write to you these same things again. It is a safeguard for you. So Paul is saying, church of Philippi, Christians today, I know I've said this before and I, I'm going to keep saying it because the safeguard I want to put in front of you is this word. I want to put a shield. I want to put something safe in front of you from the things that are going to try to take away from your life. It goes on to say, watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil and manipulators of the flesh. Mutilators, mutilators of the flesh, right, Jason? <laughs> I, had to, I had to learn that word over and over, mutilators of the flesh. For it is who we are, the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, 
though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more, Paul, sa or Paul says. Circumcised on the eighth day, this is kind of his pedigree that he's going through, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, he says, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. So Saul, this man who was the Pharisee of Pharisees, he was on the pedestal of someone that was a leader of the Pharisees, someone that had clout, had zeal, and was telling these Christians, you're full of it, was now saying, whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ, because Jesus had changed his life. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and that is by faith. And I want to hone in on two verses this morning as we continue. Verse 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in the death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. This morning I want to focus on a statement and just a few follow-up points. And when a pastor says that, it just sounds like it's going to be four or five more minutes. Um, but we've got a little more time than that. This morning, I want to share with you a statement that says that God's power can change your life. Let me read that one more time. That God's power can change your life. Did you know that God is still in the change business? Did you know that? That God is still changing people's life every day. Amen? God is still making changes. He will take something that is broken and he'll fix it. He will take something that is bent and he'll straighten it out. He'll take something that is shattered where you think there are so many tiny pieces. How could I ever be whole again? And God could restore it back to perfect. God is still in the life change business because God's name is powerful. Amen? Even this last week as we talk about fixing and repairing, um, on Friday my wife had gone thrift store uh, shopping and, uh, and just to get out, and so the kids were home, and, and she went, and she had a great time uh, finding bargains for our kids, um, and then she decided she was going to get, love you, honey, um, was going to get Chipotle for the family on the way home, and so she got in the drive through and ordered online at Harney Lane, and it was just going to be amazing, and she got up to the window, put the car in park to get uh, things that she needed to get, and uh, the lady handed the food out the window, and then she grabbed the, the control stick of the transmission, and, and the whole thing just kept coming down, but not in gear. And uh, so she kind of was freaking out at getting that, trying to fix that at the moment. Um, and the person even came back and said, did we forget something? Do you need drinks? Do you need something else? And she said, no, I just can't get my car into gear. Um, and so, you know, she called me, and, and we, we, I, I told her every little trick that I knew, rocking it, but... But that dang joystick was just covered all the way down, which meant something was disconnected. And so I'm in Galt with the kids, so I left the kids with my folks, started heading up uh, to Lodi to try to figure something out. I said, call AAA. That's why we got it. Let's get you out of the drive-thru. You know, business needs to go on. And uh, so she was on hold for like 20 minutes with AAA, and we love you, AAA. Thank you. And, uh, but AAA was, was on its way. So when we get there, my wife loves to post things on social media, if you know her. And so she had posted, you know, look at this picture. This is me and my car. They had to shut the drive through down the whole nine yards. And so she, as we're waiting in the truck, waiting for a tow truck to come, her friend Macy and her husband Richard, bless their hearts, were at Home Depot, and they come over. And so we're talking about it, and I'm like, oh, I think it's the linkage and blah, blah, blah. And he said, I said, but I don't know if it's electronic. And, and he goes, it's not. And he just, let's go, and he walks over, gets down in the drive through of Chipotle underneath, nice clothes on, slides underneath, and shifts it into gear. And so, and he goes, 
you'll be able to make it home. Just don't shift it. So I said, okay. And so, you know, shift it in gear, and we went, canceled the tow truck, and it's in the garage now, not able to go anywhere. Um, but we will fix it. But here's the thing is that sometimes we think that we're, it's completely impossible. We don't know. I was YouTubing. How did we get the night? Try this, babe. Try this. And she's trying it. Nothing's working. And I think sometimes that's the same with our lives, right? Is we keep trying these different things, looking up things, and we can't figure it out until sometimes someone comes to help us. God has the power to change our lives. Amen? I've heard people say, how can I change my life? I really want to change, but I just don't know how. Uh, well, see, I've tried, but I keep trying it on my own. Um, or they, they say that they've, they've kept, uh, you know, they've tried different things and it's just not working. Or, or I've got to get some things fixed before I'm able to change my life. The amazing thing is that even though we can go to seminars and we go to conferences, because we're always looking for an easy, painless way to change ourselves. We, some of us join health clubs uh, with the full intention and high hopes and expectations of just coming out chiseled, right? And so you join the health club and you're all excited, especially January. January, February, those health clubs, I mean, there's a lot of enrollment. And yet, you know, a couple weeks go by and then something comes up and you just, you just don't make it through. Um, we even buy self-help books uh, to try to figure it out. We go online. We go on YouTube, right? That knows everything. Uh, or Google. Try to figure it out. And sometimes we just end up with no help at all. The good news is that God does have the power to change your life. You see, the word power occurs over 100 times in the New Testament alone. God specifically wanted us to understand what his power was about. It was a, a, a word used to describe something that no one had seen or experienced before was the power of God. God's power caused the blind to see. It was God's power that made the lame to walk. It was God's power that healed the lepers and made them clean. And it was God's power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. It was God's power that did all those things. And it is God's power that can transform and change your life, even this morning. And I don't care what life stage you're at. It doesn't matter if you're just in college or in high school or junior high or if you're 70 years old and you think, I, I, my life, I've done enough. I've, maybe God is still doing things in your life. God is still working on your heart. God is still healing you from things from the past because God's power can change our lives. The Greek word for the word power in the New Testament is dunamis. And I don't know Greek, but I was able to look that up, so it looks really cool. But the word, actually, we derive the word dynamite from this word, power. And dynamite, we know, is powerful. It's explosive. Uh, it's definitely life-changing. If you hold a stick of dynamite, it will change your life. But Paul, for some reason, Paul in the book of Philippians from a prison cell wanted his followers to know that he was seeking to know this Jesus. And he wanted the church to experience knowing him as well and to be known by him. In Philippians 3.10, let's read that one more time. It says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. The message translation, which is a, a translation of the, of the Bible, there's message uh, translation, says this, I give, I give up all that inferior stuff that I could know Christ personally, experience his resurrection power, be a partner in his suffering and go all the way with him to death itself. If there is any way to get on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it, Paul was saying. That power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead over 2,000 years ago is still available to us this morning. It didn't die um, in, in the biblical days. God's power is still evident today. Let's look at some bold points this morning as we move from here and continue to talk about God's powers. Number one, God's power can cancel your past. Amen? Some of you are like, praise Jesus. <laughs> God's power can cancel your past. 
that he's powerful enough to move past our failures, our mistakes, and our regrets. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying that we're denying all the past that it never happened, but what I'm saying is that because of God's power, you don't need to be chained to these things no more. You are given a second chance. Have you ever gotten halfway through a project and figured out that maybe you just wanted to start over? Have you ever done that, like in your own house? Think about your own place. You know, you start, you get some paint. Some of you are like, yeah, 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 absolutely. But you got some paint, and you start putting it on the wall, and you're like, this is going to be amazing. I picked out such a good color. And, I, you know, because I painted it this big on the wall, and that was the one for us. And you start painting it, and you're like halfway through, and you're like, oh, not a good choice, right? <laughs> like, I screwed this one up. Um, and then you just think, you know, it's not so perfect. I wish I could just start over. Sometimes we do. I remember painting rooms. I mean, they were done. And we're like, that is a dark color. Like, that makes the room very small. And then you just start over and you repaint the room. I think about when we were building our own house. Uh, it was almost eight years ago now. But I had a lot of decisions to make, and, and Jen and I would talk about and all these things. And so we had a, a gutter company come out, and they were making gutters for our house, these seamless gutters. And the guy called me and said, so what size do you want? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he said, because I've never bought a gutter before, right, to this point in my life. And he said, do you want 4-inch or 5-inch? There's even 7-inch. You know, and I said, I really have no idea. And he's I said, well, what's the cheapest? Obviously, the smaller, right? You go, smaller the better. So I, uh, I think, and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, oh, it's your house. It's your house. I wasn't there. I was at work. So I just chose, I think it's four inch. Four sounds great. Will that handle the water or the roof? Oh, absolutely. Four inch will be great. So we went with four inch. Every time it rains hard, you go out and look at my gutters, they're bulging um, because they just needed a little more space. And so sometimes I think about that all the time. Even yesterday, I was driving my house going, dang it, you know, those gutters, I should have went bigger on the gutters. So next time I have a couple thousand dollars laying around, I'm getting seven inch gutters. Um, but I know even through this church remodel, um, we've had a team that has been working tirelessly um, behind the scenes on our flooring, repainting, getting doors matching colors, which is an amazing thing. Um, and, and a lot through that process, I know poor Christina Wagner, we love you, Christina, um, just choosing the floors. She wanted it so perfect for all of us. And, and I kept telling her, they're not going to care. Just pick something. It doesn't matter. Just, but she wanted it right, and she nailed it. Our floors look amazing in our church right now, um, and we hope you can see them soon. But sometimes we're given, we come through these decisions where we just, we, we second guess ourselves a lot. Failures, problems, bad decisions, we've all suffered them, but some people just can't let go of the past. And as a result, um, they miss sometimes and limit themselves on present opportunities because of those limitations. To live in this, this constant state of regret saying, if I had only done this, if I had only picked that color, if I had only accepted that job, and some of us know what that feels like, that we're almost tormented by sometimes our painful memories or mistakes that we've made. God says that it is unnecessary for us to continue to go along with this load, this heavy guilt, and carrying it by ourselves. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, God says that he has forgiven all our sins and canceled out every record and of the debt that we had to pay. And it says in verse 13, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave all of our sins, having canceled the charge of the legal indebtedness, which stood between us and condemned us, which he has taken away, nailing it to the cross. You see, Jesus knows everything that each of us have done, even this morning whether you yelled at each other, whether, you, you know, the kids annoyed you and you had bad thoughts. Um, God knows our hearts. God knows where we're at and that we have done wrong. But he didn't come to this life, to this world, and die on that cross so we continue to carry those each and every day. He came to change us. He didn't come to condemn us over and over. He came to change us. A clean slate is possible. Um, I, think about, I, I, uh, I think about these Etch-A-Sketch, and I don't know how many of you guys had one of these growing up. I definitely did, and it was a very, very frustrating toy to me. 
But, you, you know, you just, you can make all these different pictures and stuff. And my, my seventh grade year old son, he had this. My wife didn't think we had it anymore, but of course he had it. And you can draw all these different things. And I remember him, even as a kid, he was drawing house plans and different things like on the Etch-A-Sketch. And I think this is very true for us and a good example for us is that sometimes we, we draw out different things in our lives. We start to make a line that goes this way or up or down, and we start to figure things out in our lives. We make decisions. We step forward on some opportunities, and we start to do that. And then sometimes we get to a point in our lives where we go, man, I don't like where my life is going. I don't like how I'm treating my spouse. I don't like how I'm treating my kids, or I don't like the situation that I'm in. And sometimes we think that we can't start over. We can't begin anew, and yet what's amazing about God and this Etch-A-Sketch is that you can just shake it, right? You can just shake this away, and you have a fresh start. You have a clean slate to start from, and I think that's the most amazing thing is that when people come and they hear about Jesus Christ for the first time, sometimes we think, I've got to get some stuff figured out first. I've got, I've got to work on this. I smoke or I do this or I drink too much. Or, and we think we've got to have all these things ironed out before we come to the cross, before we come to Jesus and say, I need you because we're scared and we're not sure that it's all going to get wiped out. We think there's still going to be some lines that are going to be left. And Jesus said, I didn't come for that. I didn't come for all those scribbles. I came to give you a fresh start, a clean slate, and I've come to forgive you from everything that you've done. Amen? It means that whenever I am called to choose between anything in this world and Christ, that I choose Christ. It means that when I deal with the things in this world in ways that draw me near to Christ so I can gain more of him and enjoy more of him in this world. And it means that when I deal with the things of this world in ways I want to show that those things are not my treasure. Those aren't the things that I harbor. You know, the dent that got put on your car. It's a car. That's what the body shop is for, right? It's a vehicle, and it can be repaired. But my treasure is in Jesus Christ. That when we walk through our lives, we're not just carrying around all of this stuff, but people look at us and go, oh, that's the guy with that, or that's the guy or gal with that. They look at us and say, that's a guy that has Jesus in his life. That's a gal that knows she is a daughter of the king, and not because she has all these things, not because she's backed up by all these treasures that she's made and collected over the time. The Bible says that God does with mistakes, that when we come to him, he wipes us lately. Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed pure with water. So how do we draw near to God? We must, number one, we have to come to him and ask Jesus to forgive us. That Jesus can cancel that past that we have brought. And so if you're sitting this morning at home and you, your wife made you watch this or <laughs> your kid turned it on for some reason and you're sitting there, know that Jesus wants to forgive you for all those things and that you don't have to be carrying these things on by yourself all alone. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us from our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If God is willing to forgive us, don't you think that we need to be willing to forgive ourselves from those mistakes? If Jesus was crucified on the cross for my mistakes, don't you think we need to stop crucifying ourselves and our lives and where we're at at the time? He was nailed on that cross for us, for you and for I, the ordinary, messed up, keep making mistakes, us. And that is amazing news to me, that God's power can cancel my past. Number two, God's power can conquer our problems. The real question is, then what do we do with our problems? Most of us try to solve our problems out on our own. Um, speaking to a lot of the gentlemen online and in the room this morning, we've got it all figured out, and we're going to figure it out, right or wrong. We're going to figure that problem out, right? But a lot of times that leads to fatigue, frustration, anger, 
um, because sometimes we don't have the answer. Sometimes we can't right the ship um, upright. How often do we try to do this all in our own strength and we become just tired all the time? We become discouraged. We become absent. And a common saying that I've heard over and over is, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? You've heard that before. And we get this way when we try to solve the problems on our own and we don't allow God to help us conquer the problems that we have. We need to become real with others. We need to be honest with others. Whether it's one person or a small group of people, we need to be honest about where we're at in life and not care what someone thinks about you. You need to gather up with others and you need to share with others your life and share that with them of, I had a bad day today and that's fine. It's completely fine. And then on the other end, if someone is doing that, sharing with you, you need to be honest and say, I'm not going to judge you because you made that dumb choice again. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to love you and I'm going to listen to you. And you need to be that kind of friend. And church, I'm speaking to you, is that we don't just look at one another and constantly judge what that person is doing or what they're not doing. But we sit back and we start looking at our own lives and asking Jesus to keep healing us. I saw a meme during this whole Rona time that, man, it, it hurt as a Christian as you looked at it. And it said, um, when, when we, it says, uh, some of you are tired of wearing a mask, but some of you have been wearing one in the church for a long time. That hurts. Because sometimes we, we get so angry about the thing that we have to wear as you go into a restaurant or something, and yet you walk into this building when you're able to again, and, and you just have a mask on. You don't, you don't share with people with what's really going on in your life. Someone says, how are you doing? You said, great, but your marriage is falling apart. You walk in and you say, someone says, good morning, how are you today? And you say, I'm great, things are good. And you lost your job and you're struggling financially because we're not able to be real with one another. We're not able to take off that mask and just go, these people are gonna love me for who I am. And we will. Here at Bayside, man, we're not perfect, trust me. We make a lot of mistakes. But we're gonna love you from where you're at. You come into this place, you come outside next weekend, and we're going to love you from a distance. We're going to love you, and we're going to show you the love of Jesus because you belong in fellowship with people. You belong with all these messed up folks here um, to walk alongside them with you in this life. In Romans 8, 35, it says, Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, nakedness, danger, or a sword? It goes on to say in 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor present nor future, nor any powers, height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer is that nothing is going to separate you. Not a problem that you have, and you may think I made a big one, but nothing that you have will separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. No matter how dark a situation may be, I believe that God can turn on a light, even if it's a nightlight, a little tiny nightlight in that life. You may think that it's so dark where you're at right now. Maybe you're not working. Maybe you're sitting at home. Maybe you're frustrated. But God has the ability to turn a light on and change that. And no matter how hopeless life may seem, there is always help. And number three, as we round this out, is God's power can change our personalities what would you like to change about yourself? What would you like to alter about the way you live life? Change isn't easy, and especially if we're talking about real change. It takes time. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. The initial turning point is when we first commit our lives to Christ. Or for some of us who have been around this dang church for a long time, we need to come back to Jesus because we've been leaving Jesus behind for a long time. And as we walk and we keep walking, we've heard about it in Sunday school. We knew and we learned about it. I don't care if you're 70, 80, 90, or 17. You need to come back to Jesus starting this morning today and asking him for forgiveness. And the amazing thing is that when God gets a hold of our heart, when we come to him and confess our sins, we are a new creation 
2 Corinthians 5.17, I'll read it one more time. Therefore, if anyone was in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. Being born again doesn't mean that we're reincarnated. It doesn't mean that God just made you to be someone else. It simply means that we get a chance to start over. That God can take your same giftings, your same uh, attributes, and use it for amazing things in his kingdom. And the most amazing thing is that when we accept Jesus Christ into our lives and our hearts is that we have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us and working through us and helping us along the way. There is one thing that will keep change from happening and becoming in your life. And a lot of times we want to say, oh, it's the devil doing that. It's not always the devil. It's not always other people. It's not always our circumstances. You think, well, I can't change because of my circumstances. It's not always that. Most of the time it's you. It is procrastination. It is you that are in the way of you. You are not able to step out of the way and let God do something amazing in your life. We, we're, we're too scared sometimes. We're too complacent. We're too lazy because change involves work. And sometimes we're just too proud or we're just too stubborn. But whatever the reason is, we avoid it when we wait. One thing that I can tell you is that God's not only going to con- cancel your past, he's going to conquer your problems, and he's going to help change that personality. And that God has the power to make those changes right now. But you have to get started. You can't just keep sitting on the sidelines, but you have to say yes to a God that is constantly at your doorstep. If you are unable to let go of that past, God offers If you do, if you're ready, he offers that complete forgiveness. And sometimes I know life feels like this broken egg. It feels like you've been shattered in all these pieces. And and sometimes we think that God is not able to put this back together. I've really messed up my marriage. I have really messed up with my kids. I've really messed up at work or with drugs or alcohol. And God looks at you and says, child, I can fix you. I can change your life. I got to start with your heart. But I can change who you are, and you will be born again, a new creation in me if you just allow me the chance to do it. So what are we waiting for? All we have to do this morning is say, Jesus, I am here, the good, the bad, the ugly, and I ask you to be Lord of my life. I ask you to be my treasure and not all the stuff that I've stored in my garage, my rafters in those four storage units that I have. But Jesus, I want you to be my treasure. I want you to be my life, and I want you to have control of it. And we come to him not having all the answers, not having all the whys and the why does God, why does, we don't have all the answers. But we come to him, we say, God, you have my heart, and I believe you have the power to do a miracle in my life. I believe you can take this brokenness, and you can change it and make it whole again. Would you pray with me? Our God in heaven, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for those in the room, those online, those that got drugged to the couch to listen to this sermon and these things. God, I know that you've got all of us here for a reason. Whether someone shared it and you happened to click on it, you are hearing these words for a reason. And Jesus, I just pray that you would encourage our folks today, whether online or in person, God, that you would grab a hold of their lives and say, I do have the power to change your life, and I want a relationship with you. I don't want you just to know me, but I want a relationship with you. And so this morning, we come to you with our lives. We ask for forgiveness from all the junk, all the priorities, all the treasures that we stored up, and say that it's only going to be about you. Take a hold of my marriage. Take a hold of my finances. Take a hold of my life and my heart and all these pieces that are shattered. And Jesus, change me with your power. We love you and we thank you for this morning. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we just thank you for this morning. Are you coming back up? He's coming back up. Can we say thank you to Jason? Everybody, <laughs> write it in your, your comments if you're watching us live. Thank you, Jason, for bringing nice. the words. If it's not nice, don't. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no constructive uh, criticism. Yeah, just, we don't you know, need that. <laughs> pray, praise to God. But um, together, we want to remind you to come out here on the 11th this Friday. Join us here at 6 p.m. and then out front 9 a.m. Uh, in front of the building on the 13th next Sunday. Yes. God God bless bless you guys. Have a good Sunday.